Uh, wow, okay, I, I, I want to make sure I get all this right. Uh, your next comedian uh, writes a humor column called Skinny Dipping. Nice segue. Yeah, we plan this, everybody. We so plan it. And it spoofs current events, and she's syndicated in, uh, on the senior, via the Senior Wire. And uh, she's on the board of directors of the National Society of Newspaper Columnists, everybody. So uh, we bring a little class here. Uh, please put your hands together for the comedy of Rose Valenta, everybody. <laughs> everybody. I've had so much fun this week, I can't wait for the next conference. We finally found the cure for writer's block, booze. <laughs> <laughs> booze is now a carterism. It means woohoo! <laughs> it causes people to do things like Phil Donahue walking around the lobby of the Dayton Marriott and Joy Steele's bunny slippers. <laughs> I'm a grandma, I have 10 grandchildren. A lot has changed since uh, I was raising my own kids. Back then I was reading Irma Bombeck's If Life is a Ball of Cherries, What Am I Doing in the Pits? In it she said that it was a frightening feeling to wake up one morning and discover that while you were asleep you went out of style. <laughs> that's, how I, that's how I feel now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. When I first came to this conference in 06, I wanted to be like Irma Bombeck. And then in 2012, Gina Barreca reminded us that there will never be another Irma Bombeck. You know why? Because times have changed. She knows Irma never had to give up a belly button ring in the labor room when she was giving birth. <laughs> mm. I'm trying to remember what I have to say next. <laughs> so now kids are learning about parenting skills from watching two and a half men. Our kids are. So they don't, they think Dr. Spock's a Vulcan. Right? <laughs> so, so I think the entertainment industry is corrupting our kids. We've evolved from watching really good TV shows like The Waltons to two and a half men, real housewives, and mob wives. How's that for a bitch slapping smackdown, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the FCC invents the V-chip for us, but then God created Bill Clinton. <laughs> I blame President Clinton for starting all the perversion on television. Why do they even give you a V-chip if you can't block out X-rated news reports? Right? Your 10-year-old kid could be doing his homework in front of the TV and picking up enough information to clap a degree in sex education. <laughs> so now his big aspiration in life is to be an intern for the first woman president of the United States so he can smoke her cigarillo, right? So <laughs> it's the Murphy's Law of Parenting. You've worked hard all day, you come home, you're not on top of your game. Hitting the remote during homework is like banging out Morse code, save our ship. <laughs> did it, did another sex scandal hit the Senate. Da, 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 wiener pulls out. Did it, did Rush Limbaugh, the anal abscess of radio. It, it rubs off. <laughs> it, it's so bad that when I'm helping with English homework and I say, give me five syllables, my grandson sings, what does the fuck say? Hot tea, hot tea, ho! Oh. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know whether to take offense to that. <laughs> In the music world, kids are learning about love from people like Bruno Mars saying, I catch a grenade for ya, throw my head on a blade for ya. Really? Don't you think that? <laughs> Don't you think that's a little extreme, Bruno? She's giving you the foam finger, get over it. <laughs> I used to eat black eyed peas. Now I have to listen to them singing that they can't get enough. And my grandson sounds like he's possessed by the ghost of George Carlin in his room every time he loses an Xbox game. Yo, those are the seven words you can't say in your grandmother's house. <laughs> 
there's, <laughs> those lousy, violent Xbox games, they teach kids how to stab people, sell drugs, and become the Taliban. What's up with these games anyway? Why don't they actually teach kids things like, get your lazy ass out of bed, walk up the basement steps, it's time to fill out a job application, <laughs> and move out of my house game. Or <laughs> instead of saying dude and bra all the time, I had to talk to somebody game, or how to put a belt on so I can't see the crack of your ass game. <laughs> I firmly believe what Irma once said. She said, if you can't make it better, you can laugh at it. Well, my muffin top gets one every time. <laughs> it, it looks like midriff bulge that has succumbed to gravity. But now we have muffin top, a love story, and now it's back in, so you can even put it on your resume. <laughs> Thank you very much. If, if I made you laugh, Look me up on Facebook and feel free to discuss me with my therapist in Dan Zebin.